Hi, it's me Leo back again with another video. In this video, we're gonna have a look at DJI's new Mini 4 Pro drone. So for the past two years, I've been using the Mini 2. Um, and recently DJI have just released the Mini 4 Pro, which is the successor to the previous Mini 3 Pro. And in this video, we're gonna be breaking down all the new features that the Mini 4 Pro has. And I'm gonna try and gauge whether or not it's worth upgrading from one of the older DJI Mini drones to the new DJI Mini 4 Pro. And as always, if you do enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers. We're nearly there. It would be amazing if we could hit that goal. So yeah, anyways, let's get on with the video. So two years ago, I picked up this DJI Mini 2. My experience with this drone has been very positive. It's a very, very small, lightweight drone that's very easy to fly, and it does produce good quality 4K footage. Um, so I haven't really got any complaints with this drone. But DJI have just come out with the Mini 4 Pro, and there are quite a few upgrades over some of the older DJI drones. So the structure of this video is I'm gonna run through all the new features of this DJI Mini 4 Pro, and I'm gonna kind of give my opinion whether or not, for me personally, someone who's owned the DJI Mini 2, whether or not it's a worthwhile upgrade. So I'm sort of gonna give my opinion whether or not these features feel like gimmicks or actual decent features. So the appeal of the Mini series of DJI drones has been the weight. They are less than 250 grams, which means in the UK you can fly them without a drone license. These DJI Mini drones have always had less features than the larger DJI drones, such as the Air 2S and the full-size Maverick drones but the trade-off being that you don't need that drone flying license, so yeah. So starting off with the flight range, um, in ideal conditions, it's quoted that the Mini 4 Pro can fly up to 20 kilometers away from you, which I believe is double the range of the DJI Mini 2. So that is a very welcome improvement. Range is always a good thing. The more range, the better. But I do want to say that in direct line of sight, I've never really had any issues with the range of this drone. This DJI Mini 2 with a range of about 10 kilometers. Next, we're moving on to the flight time. The website says that it has a 34 minute flight time, which is better than the Mini 2. I think the Mini 2 has somewhere around 25 minutes, but that is the same as the Mini 3 Pro. The longer the flight time, the better. So yeah, I would say 34 minutes seems reasonable. It's not quite as much as some of the larger drones, but for a Mini drone with a very small battery, uh, it's a decent amount of flight time. But like with this Mini 2, if I was going out to fly the drone somewhere, I would make sure that I had some spare batteries. So I believe the DJI Mini 4 Pro has the exact same motors as the 3 Pro, but there has been one improvement to the speed of the drone. The descending speed, which is how fast you can bring the drone down, has increased from 3.5 meters per second to five meters per second. So that means that if you fly the drone really, really far up in the sky, you can bring it back down to earth a lot quicker, which is a good thing. Um, that is one thing that I did notice about this Mini 2. When you fly it really high up, um, it can take a while for it to descend down. Um, so the quicker the drone does that, the better. So this next feature is actually a really good feature and I don't know why they didn't introduce it a bit earlier. So this drone now has two gigabytes of internal storage, which isn't a lot of internal storage, but it's actually enough to take photographs and maybe some short videos before it fills up. Um, and that's a very good thing because the amount of times I've taken this drone out and flown it up into the air to realize that I've not actually put an SD card in. Internal storage, a good thing, but I do wish it was more. I don't know why they couldn't just put like 64 gigabytes of internal storage. So the next one is a headline feature. This new drone can shoot 4K up to 100 frames per second, which is very good. So if I was looking for a reason to upgrade my drone, this probably would be one of them. Just having the ability to shoot at 4K 100 frames per second is very appealing. There has been a few situations, especially when I'm panning very, very fast with my drone, where I have wanted to slow down the footage to make it look a bit more cinematic. And with this new Mini 4, you were able to do that. Just for a comparison, my Mini 2 only shoots 4K up to 30 frames per second. Um, yeah, so being able to shoot up to 100 frames per second is a massive upgrade. It says 4K 100 frames per second or 4K 60 in high dynamic range mode. So this new Mini 4 will have a HDR video function and that will be limited to 60 frames per second at 4K, which is still actually quite good. So yeah, that is a significant upgrade from the older drones. Another massive upgrade for this DJI Mini 4 Pro is that it can shoot in 10-bit color and it has log color profiles. So this is a flat image profile that makes it easier to color grade and captures higher dynamic range. That is a good feature and it's a feature that you usually find in professional video cameras. So it's very nice to see it in this drone. And 10-bit video is also a very nice feature. It just makes color grading a lot easier because there's a lot more color information 
in the video file. Um, and that was always one of the complaints that I had when shooting with this drone. This only shot 8 bit and there was no color profiles. So essentially what you got out of this camera you kind of had to stick with. Um, there wasn't very much scope for color correction on this Mini 2. And that probably would be one of the main reasons I would consider upgrading to this Mini 4 Pro. So this DJI Mini 2 has a 12 megapixel sensor. The Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 4 Pro both have 48 megapixel sensors that are a larger surface area. So they're 1 over 1.3 uh, in size, which is a good thing because the new sensors are actually a bit larger. So you should have slightly better low light performance. Another feature that's trickled down from the larger DJI drones down to this Mini 4 Pro is omnidirectional sensors. So if we take this Mini 2 drone, for example, this only has sensors at the bottom. This means that it can sense the ground so it won't crash into anything below it. Um, but if you were to fly this Mini 2 sideways into a tree, there would be nothing stopping you from doing that. Um, there aren't any other sensors on this drone. Whereas you can be more confident with a Mini 4 Pro because it has sensors all the way around it, which ideally should stop you from crashing into objects such as trees. The next feature was actually introduced back in the Mini 3 Pro. It is the vertical video. Um, this Mini 2 doesn't have vertical video, you're always shooting landscape video. And if you wanted to make any TikToks, you'd have to crop into that uh, landscape video and lose quality. Whereas with the Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 4 Pro, uh, the gimbal has the ability to rotate vertically so you can take uh, TikTok style videos. The next feature is active track. I don't know too much about this feature. Uh, when you're using that feature where you lock onto a subject with the DJI Mini 2, the subject has to stay relatively still, um, so it's good for panning around a person that's stationary, um, but as soon as they start moving, this will lose them. Um, whereas I believe the new Mini 4 has a more advanced feature where you can lock it onto a moving target, and that is something I would probably use quite a lot. I was a bit disappointed with how limited the tracking functions were on this Mini 2. Um, they are very basic on this drone, like the subject has to be still. Um, so if there is a more advanced tracking feature on this new drone, then that's always a good thing. And a final feature that I think is quite cool is it does have a night shot mode. So if you're shooting at night, you'll be able to take night photos. So this Mini 2 doesn't have a night mode, but you can manually change the camera settings. So you could make the shutter speed on this very, very long. Um, so you can sort of take night shots with this. So the night mode on the Mini 4 will probably be more than just increasing the length of the shutter speed. So finally, we're gonna go over the pricing of this new drone. So if you were to buy this drone with the standard controller, so this is a controller that looks very similar to the Mini 2's controller. Um, so it doesn't have a screen built in. So you're gonna to have to use your phone or an iPad. That drone combo will cost 689 pounds. The price of the drone does go up if you end up buying the controller with the screen built in. So if you were to buy the Mini 4 Pro with the controller with the screen, that is £869, so an extra £200. And then it's another £110 on top of that if you were to get the Fly More combo, which basically includes more batteries. So I'd like to hear what you all think about this new DJI Mini 4 Pro in the comments section below. Will you be buying it or will you stick with one of your older drones or are you gonna pick up one of the full-size DJI drones or do you like a different brand of drone? Just leave it in the comments section. My opinion is I think it is actually quite a good upgrade from the Mini 2. Um, the main ones are the 10-bit uh, 4K, which is a, a big selling point for me. And you can also shoot 100 frames per second 4K slow motion, which is very impressive. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section below and I'll see everyone in my next video.